I recently found out that pants actually defy gravity gradually as a person gets older over time. Don't believe me? You can notice it here during the lifespan of this man. Nowadays, it becomes increasingly difficult for men to keep their pants from falling upwards. This is just one issue we have with dealing with today's generation. Don't leave because I'm going to be showing you exactly what happened to our fashion. Coming up. Okay, so I'm going to be giving you a little rundown about what happened to fashion only in the last century. To keep it simple, this is not going to be a video on the history of how Egyptians invented makeup or how men planted flowers to show their manliness during the ancient Roman times. Let's keep it within 100 years, okay? In pre-World War II, it was very common for men to wear suits and vests casually. There was no need to separate your work clothes from your casual wear. I like history, and maybe history likes me back, but I don't know, it never told me. But there was a golden age of fashion between the years 1900 and 1950. I'm not one of those people who say, I'm living the wrong generation, but I don't, pure, I don't do it purely because of the philosophy that the before times were better somehow, but I care because of the attention of, to the science and detail about the physical attraction and aesthetics that they used to care about. There's a reason why one man looks great here and the other one not so much. There's a certain aesthetic that goes with a specific body shape. Uh, for instance, men generally for the physically fit male is the upside down triangle, whereas for a female the hourglass shape. When it comes to fashion, it's important to put into consideration the aesthetics of each body shape to best complement it. The reason why people looked better in the 1920s and 40s is because they wore clothes that fit them better and custom tailoring was a lot more common. As American casual wear evolved, people started to get tired of the stresses of having to uh, getting into clothes that they that it looked good but they didn't feel good. So around the 1950s arose youth culture where rebellious teens started to question why they had to look a certain way and this attitude became a new thing this is where things changed it's easy to see why people started sacrificing style for comfort this is the major change uh, as we still see people today walking out of starbucks like they just walked out of a gym because those are the same things, right? We have entered into a multi-styled mix and match culture of clothing that really makes things more complex than they need to be. Uh, people use the excuse, Oh, but it's freedom of expression that really matters. Okay, but for some people, I have no idea what the heck you're trying to express. Like, what is that? There have been debates about women wear pants all the way up to the 60s. Well, you know, they wore something. I'm, what I'm talking about is like trousers. The 60s was really like a revolutionary um, time where unisex clothing came in. This is when women began wearing things like t-shirts and jeans and even collared shirts. And I guess men can have long hair too now. Yay? So it appears that between 1940 and 1960 is when big changes started to happen. Comfort started to trump fashion and then people realized it was easier, cheaper, and faster to succumb to the sloppy looking clothing. Sounds like the American food industry, by the way, but that's another story. Not only that, but now fashion, fashion was a way to express and celebrate your individuality. Well, fast forward to 1998, when your yoga pants were invented by a guy named Ryan McLatchy. <laughs> McLatchy. So here we are now, living in an age where comfort is more important than aesthetics. I guess if you're one personality type, you'll see that as a good thing, and if you're another personality type, you'll think it's lazy. Here's my personal take on this whole clothing situation. Only a hundred years ago, from me making this video now, clothing was designed specifically co to contour your body and even slightly exaggerate your features. Your clothes were custom made for you. For men, this was broad shoulders and the upside down triangle look that I mentioned earlier, and as well for women uh, with their hourglass shape. This feature exaggeration actually goes back quite a long time, so it's in our human nature to want to see each other in an ideal form, sometimes even in discomfort. 
I'm told it's the latest fashion in London. Well, women in London must have learned not to breathe. These features are not just about attraction, but it's about how healthy and disciplined you appear. Although, then again, like, women did wear shoulder pads in the 30s, giving them a more powerful look that got popular quite quickly. And even before, Rosie the Riveter types even showed up in 1943. But then again, Greek women in 450 BC used to exercise and compete with men in foot races and were not permitted to wear makeup or enhancements. Okay, rabbit trail. The more I research this topic, the more confused I get. I just believe that if you put comfort, c conscious effort into the clothes that you wear, because it's a first impression, uh, and it should show others that you care about yourself. Uh, because if you give off the vibe that you care about yourself, then maybe people will think that you care about others as well. Some people like to just blend in, which is fine, I guess if that's your thing. If this video was of any interest to you, just hit that like and subscribe button down below, and uh, that will help both me and you, and I'll see you next time.